Okay, let's continue with chapter 7. Uh, we've been talking about the living primates uh, and uh, how we fit into that in terms of contemporary biology, right? Well, who exists today? But we're going to now start turning our attention to look at the evidence from the past. Unfortunately, the fossil record for uh, primates is not terrific. Um, we're still searching for things, but frankly, um, it's hard to be able to find some of these ancient uh, creatures. Uh, they're buried deeply. They don't survive. Fossils don't survive in in uh, all contexts. Uh, only in sedimentary, uh, certain types of sedimentary deposits, which eliminates huge areas of land that exist. Um, which means that we only really have for evidence for about five percent of extinct primates. Um, so once again, this whole picture of this like mosaic, where you kind of have to squint your eyes and say, okay, here's this pattern and that pattern. This is where um, the principles of, bio of biology, principles of evolution, help us to understand how natural selection is differentially selecting certain adaptations for different environments. So every bit of information that we have tells us a little bit more about the evolution of primates. What were the conditions in which they came, came, uh, came about? So like I said, our boreal adaptations are all primates share that. We all come from a forest, a forest originally, even if we don't live there today, even if our species has come down from the trees and now lives outside of the forest, uh, that's where we come from. That's where our, uh, our origin point is. Um, so let's look at the, the, the evidence for evolution in the fossil record. Well, um, the, there's three major periods of life. And actually, uh, I encourage you to look at your book and, and look at all of the sub, subdivisions of how we record time from the past. But life is divided into three major eras. And that is to say the Paleozoic, which means old life, the Mesozoic, which is middle life, and surprise, surprise, the Cenozoic, which means recent life. We are still in the Cenozoic period, but there's a lot of different subdivisions within that. Um, within the Cenozoic, there's uh, the recent life, there's what's called the Tertiary and the Quaternary. We're now in the Quaternary period, uh, the fourth period, um, but there was the third period before that, which is also part of the Cenozoic. And within the tertiary, there's the Paleocene, the Eocene, the Oligocene, the Miocene, the Pliocene, um, and then uh, in the um, in the the Quaternary period, there's the Pleistocene and the Holocene, uh, which is what we're in today, the Holocene, or we'll come to this later, possibly the uh, Anthropocene, uh, which would be since 1945. Right. Uh, so, that's how geologists determine time, and as we looked at before, archaeologists and paleontologists go and dig ex and excavate through geological strata and get assemblages which tell you what creatures were living at that period of time and what was their environment like. And that environmental, environmental uh, um, reconstruction gives us clues as to why adaptations that you see in the biological forms took place. So if you can determine that this stratum is there was forested at that time and you see arboreal adaptations, there you have it. That's the associations that you need. So um, who were these early primates? Well, in the, the uh, Cenozoic period, the very beginnings of the recent life period. So this is af just after the dinosaurs uh, were destroyed. Mammals had already existed in uh, uh, alongside of um, dinosaurs in the Mesozoic period. Uh, but as the adaptations for dinosaurs became sort of a maladaptation, uh, sorry, mammals, which were already there, started to fill in the gaps that dinosaurs were now starting to lose grip on. And so this became, the Cenozoic became the age of mammals. And the prime, earliest primates date to some of these early periods, the first epoch uh, of the Cenozoic called the Paleocene from about 65 to uh, 40, 54 million years ago. And um, one of the 
earliest, this is based on in part genetic evidence, but also a very early uh, primate uh, called Archisebus achilles found in uh, China um, uh, fairly recently, in the past decade or so, um, confirms that um, uh, primates were probably already widespread by 55 million years ago and had a common ancestor that had emerged earlier. So when we find a fossil, uh, it can either help us to um, change our views or it can confirm what we already suspected. And so uh, we suspected that um, uh, primates emerged at the very early periods of the Cenozoic and Archisebus achilles actually proves this. Also, it tells us that uh, primates were widespread uh, across pretty much the whole planet at this point. Um, uh, especially in tropical zones, which were where the forests uh, were primarily located, um, and uh, also they uh, they were in places like China, which we'll come back to in a, in a little bit. Um, and during this time, these early uh, these early primates from the fossils we have are, like I mentioned before, um, they are similar to modern prosimians, like lorises, lemurs, and tarsiers. Um, and we see that they be, are becoming uh, more diurnal, and this is, we can get this from the size of the eyes, and uh, they are favoring, um, their, their olfactory senses are reducing, and their eyes are becoming more prominent and more dominant. Also, the bones around the eyes started to uh, started to strengthen because uh, if you have, if all of your survival rests on that really important uh, sense of vision, then you better protect it. And so today our eyes are completely encased in bone, whereas a raccoon has almost no, um, no protection for their eyes at all. Because if you lose an eye as a raccoon, you can probably still get by because you have a really strong sense of smell anyway. Also, anthropoids, uh, um, anthropoids that started to emerge, um, uh, um, their eyes started to rotate forward, so that gives them better um, uh, um, depth perception as opposed to prosimian forms that we see. So anthropoids are starting to branch off uh, from the, uh, the prosimian forms. Um, also, anthropoids, I mentioned the eye sockets are becoming bonier, and also they start to produce a, uh, a dry nose, which is separate from the upper lip. In the uh, Oligocene period, from about 38 million to 23 million years ago, um, anthropoids became the dominant uh, uh, primates. They were extremely, this form with what I just mentioned there, the bony eyes, uh, forward facing, uh, active during the daytime, uh, with a dry nose and a reduced sense of smell, uh, these things start to become very uh, numerous, the most numerous primates uh, on Earth. And uh, the group of anthropoids that are found uh, at a very uh, sort of a hot spot site where there's a lot of evidence from in the Fayum uh, portion of Egypt um, is where the New World monkeys and the old world monkeys seem to have started their split. As I talked about this earlier, the continents were closer together at that time. They were separated a little bit, and so, but some of these uh, platyrenes that we spoke about in the last lecture uh, probably rafted across this sea over to South America, found some places to live over there, and then started to. Uh, 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 expand, but they became, as the continents drifted apart, uh, the catarines that were still in the um, the old world started to uh, advance, started to um, uh, increase in number, and the platyrenes became isolated as a separate group, and you had those two branches. Um, we are not from the platyrenes in the new world, we're from the catarines in the old world, and we know this because of the dentition, which I discussed before, the Y5 pattern and the 2-1-2-3 dental formation. In the Miocene period, uh, from about 25, 3 million years ago to about 5 million years ago, um, you see uh, the first um, hominoid fossils start to em emerge. Um, in... Uh, and, and hominoids uh, are uh, ape-like. 
Now, Pro Console is a, a, a really abundant and um, uh, successful anthropoid from the early Miocene period. So that would bring us to about 23 million years ago. And um, they have sort of monkey-like bodies that they have four legs. Um, they walk on, you know, the four equally length uh, um, legs, a C-shaped spine, um, and even a tail. Uh, but their heads and faces and jaws and teeth were very ape-like. And so we suspect that this was the emergence of, uh, of uh, hominoids, which include apes. So this is the split between monkeys and apes, and something like a proconsul has characteristics of both, which is what you would expect at about the time of that split. Um, so later in, in the Miocene, uh, it seems as though... Um, uh, um, the apes started to, they were spread across all of the old world, but maybe the first of these apes, uh, in the, in the middle Miocene period seemed to might, they might very well have come from Asia actually. And in fact, one of these, uh, Miocene apes, which was found in Asia, um, uh, was called Gigantopithecus, means giant ape. Uh, and uh, this would have been 10 feet tall, 400, or sorry, 1,200 pounds, and they only died out about 300,000 years ago, so they would have actually op overlapped with Homo erectus, one of our human uh, ancestors. Um, and finally, um, I'll round out uh, the pre hominini uh, evolution with uh, um, Pyrolopithecus catalunicus, which is a fairly recent uh, discovery in Spain, or sorry, uh, by Spanish anthropologists, not in Spain, um, uh, which in about 2004 uh, was discovered and may very well be the last common ancestor of humans, chimpanzees, gorillas, and orangutans that existed about 13 million years ago. It was well adapted for tree climbing and, but also knuckle walking when it was on the ground. And uh, it was probably a fruit eater, so a, 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 a herbivore, but specifically fruit. And that's very similar to uh, what we get with gorillas in particular. Um, so uh, this, this is the emergence of apes. The, uh, and after this time period, we start to get, uh, expect to see uh, the split into the hominini about eight, nine million years ago, based on genetic clock. Uh, that is to say, the, the genetic similarity that we have with our closest living relatives, which are chimpanzees, predicts that the number of mutations would have taken about eight or nine million years to form. And so we should really look for uh, uh, our ancestors to have emerged uh, about eight or nine million years ago. And we'll pick this up again with the earliest of the um, our um, hominini ancestors uh, in Africa at about seven million years ago. And that's just about right snack, smack on cue for what we would expect to find our ancestors. Okay, so that's it for um, the non-human primates. I'll catch you next time about the emergence of our line. All right, see you then.